We see it almost every weekend. Some driver's got a great car and he's been running near the front all day long. The laps are winding down and he comes into the pits for one last stop. Then something goes wrong. He overshoots his pit stall, or he parks too close to the pit wall, or he breaks the pit road speed limit. Suddenly his hopes for a win are gone. Not because he wasn't fast enough, but because of a bad pit stop. Good pit stops don't just happen. They require concentration, precision, and above all else, practice. Every second you spend in the pits translates to hundreds of feet out on the racetrack. A pit stop involves a lot more than the 15 seconds or so that it takes your crew to add fuel and change tires. This lesson will break the pitting process down into several steps, and it will give you tips for getting through each of those steps as quickly as possible. Before we go through those steps, there are a couple of things you need to know, like where your pit stall is. Yeah, it doesn't get much more basic than that, but remember, chances are good that the stall you used in practice won't be the one you'll be using in the race. Why? Because for the happy hour and race sessions, pit stalls are assigned by qualifying order. The fastest qualifier gets the pit stall closest to the pit exit. The next fastest qualifier gets the stall immediately behind him, and so it goes all the way down to the end of the field. So if you have a happy hour session, pay attention to where your stall is, because that's where it will be during the race, too. If you skipped happy hour, just remember where you qualified. That will give you a good idea of how far down pit road your stall is. Making a good pit stop involves more than just executing the fundamental techniques that you'll find in this lesson. It also takes a good feel for the specific challenges you'll be facing at each particular track. Every track is different. Some have nasty transitions between the racing surface and the apron that can easily throw the car into a spin, while others have smooth transitions that can be made at higher speed. Some tracks have pit access and exit roads that you need to use. Some tracks have one pit lane and some have two. The pit road speed limit at each track can vary from 35 to 65 miles per hour, so make sure you know what it is. Okay, so now it's time to make a pit stop. Step number one consists of pulling off of the racing surface, getting onto pit road, and slowing down to the pit road speed limit. Simple, right? Well, not always. First of all, you want to make sure that you don't have any cars in the way when you duck down off the racing surface. Be sure to use your mirror to watch for any last second surprises. When you come down off the racing surface and onto the flat part of the track called the apron, try to be smooth with the controls, especially the brake. You'll be braking and turning as you make that transition, so it'll be easy to send the car into a spin. As you're bringing the car down toward the pit entrance, you want to look for a white or yellow line that usually crosses pit road just before the pit stalls begin. That line is the point at which the pit road speed limit goes into effect. You want to try to time your braking so that you get down to the pit road speed limit just before you reach this line. This part of the pit stop is the riskiest one, no doubt about it, but it can also be the most rewarding one too, because if you time everything just right, you can save a lot of time. Step number two involves traveling down pit road to your pit stall. This can be tricky, especially if a bunch of cars are all pitting at the same time, as is often the case after a caution flag. Each pit road has two lanes. You'll want to stay in the outermost lane until you get just a few stalls away from your pit stall. At this point, move over a lane. That will set you up for a nice smooth approach into your pit stall. Step number three involves pulling into your pit stall and parking your car in the proper position. If you don't park within the boundaries of your pit box, you won't be able to get any pit service. Even if you are inside the pit box, you can't get too close to the inside pit wall. If you do, your pit crew won't be able to change your inside tires. To park in the right place, use your pit sign as a guide. As you pull into the stall, your pit sign man will lower the sign across the front of the stall. When you're just starting out, your goal should be to just touch the middle of the sign with the middle of your front bumper. If you do this, you'll park in the right place every time. As you get more experienced at pitting, try to park so the car is at a slight angle, aimed toward the outside front corner of the stall, with the outside front wheel just barely inside the pit box. This can make it much easier to exit the pits if you have another car pitting in the stall immediately in front of you. Step number four involves pulling out of the stall getting back up to the pit road speed limit, and getting to the pit exit. This can be difficult to do when pit road is crowded, and it's especially difficult if there's a car pitting immediately in front of you. As your pit stop is finishing up, look in the mirror and try to plan your exit. When the crew chief yells, go, 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 
Pull out into the first lane as soon as you can and get up to the pit road speed limit as fast as you can. If there's a car parked immediately in front of you, you may need to nail the gas and use wheel spin to get out of your stall. Once you're in the first lane, keep glancing at the mirror and pull into the outside lane as soon as you can. This is very important when there are other cars on pit road because you never know when they'll try to pull out of their stalls. Once you're safely in the outside lane, concentrate on staying as close to the pit speed limit as you can. When you get past the final pit stall, you'll usually see a line crossing pit road. That line shows you where the pit road speed limit ends. Once you reach that point, your spotter will tell you, OK, you're clear of pit lane. As soon as you hear that message, you're clear to start accelerating back to racing speed. There's one more thing you need to keep in mind before we move to the next step. If you're pitting under yellow flag conditions, there will be a NASCAR official stationed at the end of pit road. He's called the Stop Go Man. If you reach the end of pit road and the Stop Go Man is displaying the green go sign, you're free to leave the pits like you normally would. However, if he's displaying the red stop sign, you're not allowed to go past him. If you do, you'll be penalized. So if you see him holding the stop sign, don't pass him and wait until the sign changes to go. Then you can leave the pits normally. Okay, we're almost done. The final step of the pitting process involves accelerating back up to racing speed and merging with race traffic. Once you've cleared the pit exit, you can go as fast as you want, but you're not allowed to immediately pull back up onto the racing surface. At the majority of the oval tracks, you'll need to stay to the left of the line which separates the apron from the racing surface, and you won't be allowed to cross it and merge until you get around to the back straight. On the other hand, some tracks will let you merge before the first turn. In other words, here's another instance where you'll need to learn the procedure for each track. If you're not sure of what to do, use some of your practice time to follow one of the computer-controlled cars as it exits the pits. You'll also want to listen for two very important messages from your spotter. If you attempt to merge too early, your spotter will say, don't merge yet. Once you finally reach the legal merge point, your spotter will say, OK, merge when you can. When you hear that message, look in the mirror, and when it's safe to merge with race traffic, go ahead and do it. Once you're sure of a particular track's pit exit procedure and its merge point, you'll want to practice getting from the pit exit to the merge point as quickly as possible. Keep in mind, as you leave the pit exit, you're usually driving around on the apron, which isn't banked as steeply as the racetrack. You're also in a low gear, so it's very easy to apply too much throttle and spin the car. It takes a lot of care at pit exit up until you get to the back straight to make sure that you don't end up in the wall. Well, that just about wraps it up. Practicing your pit stops may not be the most exciting thing in the world, but hopefully you now understand just how important it is. Just a few minutes of pitting practice can save you precious seconds when the time comes to make that pit stop under pressure, and it's a whole lot easier to make up time in the pits than it is to make it up on the racetrack.